So Dr. Lee got the same machine and ran a test. This is actual footage. A pig was put through the chipper, since their skin and bones are similar to humans. Dr. Lee noticed that the chipper produced a unique signature type of cut, one that matched the cutting pattern on the debris found at the river. What I well, was presented with were uh, these very, very tiny, uh, literally millimeter-sized fragments of um, bone. And in amongst some of these fragments, it was possible to uh, see that some of the fragments uh, indeed came from a human. Under a spectrograph, Dr. Harper noticed tiny grooves in the bones. The grooves told a story. They were formed by blood vessels inside the top of the skull, something only humans have. They also identified skull fragments from the side of the head. And these were the most important from a forensic point of view. So if the fracture's beveling outwards, we know the force came from the inside. We know there was a whole lot of force. So we didn't know if that's what killed her. We didn't know if she was dead before it happened. But we certainly knew she was dead afterwards. Okay. So now we know a human being is dead. The next question is, who? Dr. Harper froze some of the bone fragments with liquid nitrogen, then ground them to a fine powder. Tests revealed the bones came from an individual with type O positive blood, Hella Kraft's blood type. Finally, Dr. Lee turned his attention to the gray piece of metal believed to be a crown to a tooth. But there was no human remains on that crown, so that couldn't be used as a form of identification. They needed more. So Dr. Lee asked Dr. Karazoulis himself to go to the river where he searched for five days. Then, a break. I'd been at the crime scene for maybe eight hours. I slipped and fell into the brook. And I had a pail and I was picking evidence up. And I cleaned my hand off in this pail that I was collecting evidence in. When I came into the tent, I put all the contents of the pail down. I washed my hand and I looked down and there was the tooth. But was it hella crafts? And I was able to match all the years of different x-rays. I imagine it was from 1986 back to 1982. So I had no doubt in my mind that the tooth I found came from Heli Kraft's mouth. Finally, the forensic team had an actual match. And they say, Heli Kraft's teeth are in this pile. And they were knocked out of her head violently. And we have a human head going through violent injury in the same pile. So we said, that means Heli Kraft is dead. Based on the forensic evidence, Richard Kraft was arrested and charged in the murder of his wife. What happened to Hella Krafts? Based on the forensic evidence, a reasonable scenario can be pieced together. Okay, thanks for the ride. On November 18th, Hella Krafts returned from her flight to Germany around 7 p.m. She put the children to bed around 8. The nanny had the night off and wasn't expected home until midnight. Before going to bed, Hella changed into her favorite blue nightshirt, looked through her mail, stuffed it well, into her pocket, and began you. changing the sheets. I don't believe you. You know, I can't take this anymore. Why don't you just get out? No, Go you see. get out. You get out. Leave me alone. Then it happened quickly. Using a police flashlight, the first blow knocked her to the ground. The second produced the blood splatter, hitting the mattress at a 10 degree angle. While falling, her head grazed the side of the mattress, leaving the blood smear. He wrapped the body in the bed covers, carried her through the house into the garage, and placed the body into a freezer. Richard tried to clean up the blood with some towels which were later washed. 
but traces of blood remained on the towels, later discovered by Dr. Lee. Marie Thomas, the nanny, arrived home around 2 a.m. and went right to bed. At daybreak, Crafts took the children and the nanny to his sister's house, saying their mother had left earlier. Marie, hurry up! He then rented the largest commercial wood chipper he could find and a U-Haul truck using his credit card. By nighttime, Hella's body was completely frozen. Crafts transported the remains, along with a chainsaw and some wood, to the river. The snowplow driver spotted the wood chipper on a bridge around 3.30 in the morning, and again near the river an hour later. Using his chainsaw, Crafts dismembered Hella's frozen body and put the pieces through the chipper along with some wood. Since the body was frozen, it produced little, if any, blood splatter. Most of the debris blew into the river. Only a few pieces fell short, landing on the bank. The mail Hella placed in her nightshirt pocket passed through the chipper, virtually untouched. Before leaving, Crafts took apart the chainsaw, scratched the serial number off, and threw the pieces into the river. How close was the brutal murder of Hella Crafts to the perfect crime? Boy, <laughs> damn close. Damn close. And if that person truly believes they're not going to be caught and there's no fear or threat to them, they could get by a polygraph test. The key solving this case so-called teamwork, assemble a good team, and work together. Amazing. Yeah, the, the, the human body writes so much of its history in itself.